yesterday we have seen this one that is program rivo why this is inefficient so if there are any doubts uh, in this program rivo someone can unmute and talk to me uh, if no doubts uh, we will proceed with uh, the other one interrupt so i just count down uh, so that someone can uh, uh, come forward if, if someone having doubt about this program right so count down starts 5 4 3 2 1 0 i have no doubts here so let us go to this interrupt uh, i will in this interrupt i will as been said here let us go to our uh, this one uh, So here we have this one. <coughs> this is our processor here. Yeah, my idea is to everyone. Yeah. There is no one. No one. I I think you people. Are yes, sir. Yes, okay, sir. It's okay. audible. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So this is our processor. And uh, we have some some I/O devices. Let us say here some I/O devices. This I/O device earlier uh, yesterday what we have seen. This, it is the job of the processor that all the time it has to check here. Uh, that inside this we have some something called status register. Yesterday we have uh, said that there is only one uh, flag register uh, flip flop. Single bit, uh, uh, single bit uh, register that we are uh, focusing. Apart from that, there are lot many uh, flip flops here. Put together them, we we were calling like a status uh, register. So this was the yesterday's discussion that this processor should uh, go here and check this. Uh, yep, uh, that is flag flag register. Whether this I/O is ready to give any data uh, to this processor or not. So for that, this job uh, processor is uh, doing it. If this I/O uh, is setting here as a flag uh, bit as one, then this processor starts taking data from this I/O device, and which is uh, uh, this way it is happening. Like uh, this is happening. Uh, how this is happening? One byte each time, uh, one byte. So this one byte data was taking. Yesterday we have seen something uh, ten thousands, I guess, uh, some microseconds just to transmit this. So till that time, this processor, this processor, cannot attend any other uh, uh, task here. If it is doing some uh, some task here, uh, for example, maybe uh, a multiplication pro uh, program, suppose. So this multiplication program, this this processor, this processor, this is a multiplication program for task. This task for a while, this processor has to stop till. Till this this uh, device, uh, this I/O device completely sends not its uh, data to the uh, processor. So uh, that is called uh, uh, this checking. This checking here. This uh, this, this uh, you see this this line here. This is going here all the way and going to the uh, yep uh, that is uh, flag register. This, this is done. This is happening with the help of a instruction that uh, set of instructions. So I/O instructions. Then we call I/O instructions. The program. So this uh, program is actually uh, executed by this processor, and this program will check this uh, flag register. If this is set to one, then it takes uh, uh, you know data from this I/O device, uh, one byte uh, at a time. So that way, this is uh, taking this much of time just to transmit one byte. So likewise, if there are several bytes, so many times so it has to keep uh, checking this. The other byte is ready or not? Then it has to wait for this time so that this entire byte can be uh, uh, transferred to the processor. So meanwhile, this processor cannot perform this intended functionality. This functionality it cannot perform. So for that reason, what we are doing now, 
we are going to this one uh, that is uh, called uh, you know interrupt so this is the processor your processor is uh, doing some uh, task here t1 t2 one after another if this is uh, t1 is done then it may go to t2 like that uh, so some few tasks are uh, it is performing so this processor is busy doing all this so if it is doing all this then we have a mechanism in, uh, here in the io device so what it does is in the io device there is a mechanism called interrupt mechanism so this interrupt mechanism what it does is is a job of this interrupt mechanism this is a pro, this is a program this program's job is to check here uh, flag to check flag here. so uh, it is not going to execute this 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 processor is not going to come here all the way and check here this flag. so design that this interrupt is placed here in the interface module itself here the, you know that interface our uh, interface module look on very first session we are uh, uh, we are uh, talking about something called interface hardware this interface is there resided here inside here so this interface actually this your io device is connected this io device is connected through via this interface this interrupt is placed in, inside this interface this interrupt will check the flag this process this io whether this 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 io device uh is uh, the, uh, ready to communicate or not who is checking now this processor is not checking this interrupt is checking this flag if this is ready then this interrupt is actually sending a request to the processor that this is ready so by doing so what is that we are doing is uh we avoid uh, this checking here all the time here this has to come and check this one here and then this uh, uh, 10000 uh, so as example for microseconds it has to wait because this is uh, the, the transmitted here to the uh, processor because uh, this this other other uh, the second time this this clock may be set to 1 or uh, it may be set to 0 this processor is not going to take up any of the tasks here since this communication already started this 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 tasks are for a while are uh, postponed by the processor and this uh, processor is now busy with checking this 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 uh, flag uh, here flag day now what we are doing is we are uh, eliminating this checking itself this, uh, this this checking itself we are eliminating this, this checking checking we are eliminating this checking if we eliminate what happens then if this flag is ready or not who is checking now this interrupt program is checking this interrupt program is checking where this interrupt program this is uh, there in the in, inside the, this interface module is checking this one. if this is ready this flag is set then this interrupt is uh, sending a request to the processor saying that uh, uh, this io device is ready with some data so now what it does is this this processor though for a while it is pausing but it will not pause for this long for this long it is not going to pause just to initiate the transfer it pauses for a while and then it it, it what it does is the control lines are transferred to the uh, this data bus now data bus is actually taking the uh, taking the this uh, data register contents here data register uh, these are through the data bus going to the processor till this 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 processor transmits the control to the data bus here till that time this these are postponed once control is transferred to the data bus now the uh, communication is uh, happening between uh this this one this uh, io device to here to the uh, memory this processor is now will be taking up the postponed uh, tasks here it is task again taking this task here whatever the uh, task being postponed it will uh, attend that task this uh, who is handling now this one 
this one is directly handled by the data uh, bus uh, from IO device to the this memory unit. Is that clear to everyone? This interrupt how it actually is uh, uh, helping us. Is that clear to everyone? This concept. Any doubts here? Are there any doubts here? If those those having doubts, they can unmute themselves and uh, they can ask. Okay. Uh, countdown. Five. Four, three, two, one. I assume no doubts. So let us go to this one here. Let us read now this uh, theory what we have uh, uh, this uh, related to interrupt. In the in programmed I/O method, CPU stays in a program loop until the I/O unit indicates that it is ready for data transfer. This was the thing uh, we said. Earlier, that this programmed IO, the last uh, session that we have seen here, this programmed IO, in that case, CPU stays in program do until this IO unit indicates that it is ready. How it, this IO unit is going to indicate through that flag? Now, this is a time consuming process. Since it keeps the processor busy needless, so this is a uh, the uh, very point yesterday also we discussed here why this uh, 10,000 times it, it is waiting and uh, mm -hmm. that, that is called time consuming process. Today also in the paint software we have uh, demonstrated uh, how this is the time consuming process, this one, this program I.O. So it can be avoided by using an interrupt facility and special commands to inform the interface to issue an interrupt request signal when the data are available from the device. This was the point uh, in the pairing software we were talking about. It can be avoided this time uh, needlessly. Uh, the CPU is uh, waiting. It's a, uh, it's a time consuming process. This all this 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 flaw, this problem we can avoid using an interrupt facility and special commands to inform the interface. Interface, you know very well that that comes between CPU and the IO devices. This interface module to inform the interface to issue an interrupt request signal when the data are available from the device. In the meantime, CPU can proceed to execute another program. Who is handling now CPU? Earlier case, earlier here in the program IO, it is CPU that is coming and checking the uh, flag uh, bit. But in this case, this interrupt that is going to handle whether this I.O. device is ready with the data or not, this interrupt facility is going to handle. Since CPU is not checking now, it is interrupt that is handling this uh, data availability uh, uh, of, the, uh, of the I.O. device, ready or not, this CPU, since it is not checking now, this CPU now can do some other tasks. So the interface, meanwhile, keeps monitoring the device. This was the again in the paint software in the set in the this interface will uh, keep monitoring the device this this interface because the interface is now upgraded with the interrupt facility that interrupt software will keep checking whether the device is ready or not this is IBO device so who is monitoring now this interface is monitoring so when the interface determines that the device is ready for data transfer. It generates an interrupt request to the computer. So this is also in the paint already I discussed this one. So upon detecting the external interrupt signal, since this this interface has detected that now the data is ready from the external I/O, what it does, it generates an interrupt request to the computer. So upon detecting this request that is coming from the external uh, interrupt signal, that is from the interface uh, unit. So the CPU momentarily stops the task. It is processing branches to a service program to process the I/O transfer, and then returns to the task it was originally performed. So this was also uh, being said in the uh, paint program that CPU mo momentarily stops the task it is processing and branches to service program. The service program is nothing but handling the data bus that I.O. device can transfer to the memory, that is service program. So this service program, it branches, CPU branches to uh, a service program. Why service program is required? To process the I.O. transfer. 
to process the IO transfers. Once the service program takes over the process of uh, IO transfer, this uh, CPU returns to the original task and then returns to the task it was originally performing. The CPU momentarily stopping and, and going to the asking the service program, this is another program. Baba, you go and uh, start this IO transfer between the IO device and to the memory. So that momentarily, this, this, this job is done by the CPU. And then this moment, after this moment, this CPU comes back to the originally what it was doing, this, some, some task it was doing. So it, it comes to that. So that's how this interrupt is uh, really uh, less. Uh, we can save that time. Now coming to the, uh, the same again, the stuff uh earlier in the paint what we had discussed the cpu responds to the interrupt signal by storing the return address from the program counter into a memory stack cpu responds to the interrupt because cpu is already actually here is it is momentarily stops the task so momentarily stop the task means it is uh, something like this uh, uh, you have suppose uh, here uh, this is your CPU doing some job. CPU is doing some job. It's doing your CPU. Your computer is doing some job. So this is uh, say T uh, one task one. Say here you have T two task two. So now CPU actually at this point. So let us say the address is uh, here is the address zero. And then here is the address one. Uh, here is the address two. Likewise, uh, some addresses here. So we don't know what is the address transfer. So that is that. So as you know, there is a call, uh, something called your uh, PC. Anyone guess? Uh, you just guess uh, what PC is. PC we already seen in a common bus. So that is program. Uh, what's that program? Program counter. Anybody? Is that correct? Yes. Somebody should answer. Though not having doubt, yes or no. What is PC? We have instruction register. We have PC. The program uh, counter. Are Nobody responding. Somebody respond. That's how you show that your presence. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, some other guy. Some other. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. So. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, it shows you uh, your presence. So this pro uh, this program counter actually points to the next next instruction. So currently CPU is executing uh, this instruction zero means this program counter will be pointing to the this this next next when CPU count uh, control comes to the uh, first instruction and program counter will update itself to the next instruction so that it can fetch from that location. Likewise, it is going to fetch. Suppose say uh, currently it is there at this at this uh, address at this address CPU is. Uh, executing this particular instruction at second then program counter will be updated with the uh, obviously with the next address so that next address is three so but when it is doing this uh, this 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 uh, this uh, second instruction when it is executing this has received a request uh, this has received a request uh, uh, this uh, cpu has received a uh, this is your cpu box so some some box is here some other hardware which takes the interrupt request. So this has come from this uh, interface unit. So this in, to this interface unit we have some I/O device connected. This I/O device is connected to this interface. This interface is sending a request now. So because we, this is now upgraded with the interrupt interrupt facility. So this interrupt now what it is doing is it is going to send a request to the CPU. This hardware actually looks into handling this interrupt uh, uh, sort of things. So now this CPU actually working uh, executing this this instruction. This is there uh, with this uh, second instruction. So very unfortunately, at this very time, this has come. Meaning what? It cannot go to here this this address 
it should attend the cp should attend this request and also it has to preserve this this return address when this is done this uh, request is done this this uh, request is done this request is accepted that is interrupt request is attended at that time cpu has to take care that the return address is 3 when pointer comes to the uh, come back here control come back here it should attend the uh, third instruction third address so meaning what with this what i am trying hard to convey you is it has to store this return address somewhere in the uh, system that is again in the system computer itself it has to preserve so this is uh, some another memory let us say uh, return address storage uh, uh, memory location so return address is stored in this memory so this is a return address when cpu attends this request it it does all that job earlier explained that uh, transferring control to the data bus and then this uh, io can start uh, transferring data through that uh, data bus to the cpu memory somewhere here is a memory so to that it is transferring so then this job of transferring control to the data bus some other control in data bus after that it has to come back here to this loca location so what it does is how it comes to this this address it goes here this control again before coming here control actually goes to this one here this, this return address and it fetches the return address return address is stored here three now pc is updated with this uh, address pc is updated here with this uh, three so when this pc comes here happily pc will point to the three now from three on this task without it losing any meaning it it is continuing the task so this complex mechanism uh, is there involved here so that is what we are uh, talking about this one here uh, this one here is uh, let me take that uh, point the interface meanwhile keeps monitoring the device when the interface determines that device is ready for the data transfer it generates an interrupt request to the computer upon detecting the external input signal interrupt signal the cpu momentarily stops the task which is processing branches to the service program to process the io transfer these branches transferring control to, to the uh, data uh, some other unit and the some other unit will look into transferring this io to the uh, memory so this this is done with the help of another program or service program and then returns to the task it was originally performing this we covered we were actually talking about this one the cpu responds to the interrupt signal by storing the return address here actually we, we would have taken up this one uh, straight away from that uh, paint software to here because from here only we had gone to the paint software so the cpu responds to the interrupt signal by storing the return address from the program counter this the pc i was talking about pc into memory stack so that in the paint separately we have drawn, drawn some memory so in the memory stack and then control branches to the service routine this service routine is this this service routine, this service program before actually attending this service program cpu preserves return address it stores in some somewhere in the memory stack and then control branches to the service routine that processes the required uh, io transfer Yes, at this point we will take some uh, feedback from you people. Is that clear concept very clear? Is that very uh, very much understood by you people or not? Because uh, in uh, these are uh, uh, definite questions. Uh, these are external uh, point of view, definite questions, and concept should be clear. Now, no doubts about uh, there is no countdown. Simply, you have to acknowledge that uh, yes, concept is clear. Mm, 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 mm. Yes, nobody. Yeah, you can unmute simply. What is that? Is yes, that? sir. Okay, thank you. One, the other. Are they? Are there people? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's great. Are there people? Only two, two guys are there. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, so, but uh, this is not fair. You had to unmute yourself and interact. So that is how this is handling. the way that the processor chooses the branch address of the service routine varies from 
from one unit to another. So some methods here actually how this is, uh, uh, you know, return address is uh, stored here. This, this return address, I was just talking about this one. This address, you know, uh, let me take some, some other. This one, this return address, if you have actually kept the return address here in some this, this memory, this memory. So how is that mechanism is handled? Again, this is again uh, simply like that. It cannot come and uh, it cannot uh, keep in this memory location. No, there should be some mechanism. So that mechanism is uh, this uh, this one. So there are two methods to accomplish this. This is uh, let me take this. Uh, so fine. The way that the processor chooses the branch address of the service routine varies from one unit to another. There are two methods. For accomplishing this, one is a vectored interrupt, the other is a non-vectored interrupt. In non-vectored interrupt, branch address is assigned to a fixed location in memory. In a vectored interrupt, the source that interrupts the sub interrupts supplies the branch information to the computer. This information is called interrupt vector. So here again, I repeat this: uh, one, two, three, four points. The way that the processor chooses the branch address. It has to branch to the subroutine here. Uh, this one here. TPU momentarily stops the task which is processing. Branches, this branches to service code. This branching. So this branch address of the service routine, of the service routine varies from one unit to another. So where this service routine, I mean interrupt to handle the interrupts, let me go back again here, take up this fresh page. Uh, yeah. The fresh page is, again, uh, this is processing very quickly, we will uh, uh, complete this. We have come to the this one, it should come here, actually it is executing in our earlier example, second instruction. So when it is executing second instruction, this PC is actually loaded with the next instruction. But at that point, when it is actually performing uh, this instruction execution, we actually uh, had received a interrupt request. Interrupt request has come from this interface. So the, to which this IO device is actually connected. So this interrupt request needs to be handled by this CPU now. So meaning what? This all interrupts are actually here somewhere in memory. Let us say this is your memory. Uh, you have some uh, some memory here. Uh, this is here, some memory. <laughs> and th there are types of memories. We have uh, something called uh, RAM and uh, something called uh, ROM. Read only. This is actually during the program, I mean, during this this execution. Here it is executed task one. Then later on it may execute another task, another program. So likewise, depending upon our our user uh, developer programs, it is, all these other things are happening actually. So all these programs are actually uh, there in the uh, RAM. They are running from the RAM. All instructions are running from this one. But this ROM here, this ROM here, it will have pre-planned uh, programs in the ROM. So this this memory I am talking about something, uh, some sort of ROM, not uh, a RAM. This is a something called a ROM. Let us say, I say as I said in the ROM, what will be there? Pre-decided some programs we keep in there. Pre-decided or pre-planned. So what my pre-planning is, if it is coming from the printer, some some instructions should uh, work here. This, this this portion is for the uh, printer, and uh, this is for uh, some other uh, I/O device. Uh, suppose say for example. Uh, you are uh, you know, what interrupts we can say uh, yeah. there is a what we call any any help some some emergency interrupt uh, what can come to the computer 
some mm, some plant is there somewhere some plant is there some plant here so in this plant here temperature should not exceed 60 degree uh, celsius if it is exceeding 60 degree celsius uh, you should give the interrupt to the processor should give the process to the processor so let me get this oh no this one it is going to the processor actually this interrupt is uh, going to the uh, instead of this pens uh, yeah now it's there. this plan should give the interrupt to the uh, cpu actually CPU. now cpu what it has to do it has to go to the that uh, interrupt uh, it has to attend this interrupt request and the related uh, instructions immediately it has to execute so that is called branch so this is this in at this branch i'm keeping plant related uh, all decision making instructions uh, pla this plant when 60 degrees it is exceeded so immediately what actions i have to take so those instructions i am keeping here in this in this uh, in this uh, address location from here this this point to this one so this is again this is another branch so this branch deals with a plant related uh, controlling instructions so now depending upon the uh, uh, request that is coming to the cpu cpu uh, this is uh, earlier we took to the printer no so let us say this is the printer this is a uh, printer if printer related requests are coming then it should go and execute this 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 subroutine this subroutine this subroutine, this subroutine. If a uh, plant related emergency coming, this should be given higher priority and uh, th uh, and these instructions uh, here, uh, set of instructions, these instructions should be executed. Like that, we have a uh, set of uh, pre-planned, pre-decided, uh, you know, instructions. Uh, we kept in some memory called, uh, this is a ROM memory. Now, when this request is coming from the plant, this CPU, should go here to this address and all instructions should read it uh, one after another to maybe uh, to decrease this uh, decision making what to may uh, uh, you know what sort of instructions are required all been kept here so then it is going to execute so this is called uh, branching so if this comes it should branch here here if uh, uh, this comes then it should branch uh, here so this branching ability how is that uh, cpu is going to branch if, if this comes it should branch here if this comes uh, plan, from plant comes then it should branch uh, here at this location so this branching ability that branching ability we are here uh, talking about this uh, somewhere here let me take again this uh, lesson or uh, this one the way the processor chooses the branch address of the service routine to which to which request we have to service the service program i said printer in that location and the plant in some other location so the way the processor chooses the branch address of the service routine varies from one unit to another yes this is very obvious your computer home home uh, do, our domestic computer not required plant handling the sort of uh, uh, interrupt requests our home uh, desktop is required uh, enough with a, a webcam a printer and a usb port and mouse and uh, some other uh, stuff but in the industry those computers uh, the those are handling automated uh, way uh, the, the you know uh, s systems are handled so they they have uh, different service routines so emergency service routines, uh, that plant example I gave. So that's why that depends the way the processor chooses the branch address of the service routine varies from one unit to another. So the, in this context, with this, con with this, the context is you have to continue from this to here. There are two methods of accomplishing this, this, this branch address. So one is a vector interrupt method, the other is a non-vector interrupt method. So in non-vector, this, sec this second one, in non-vector interrupt, which address is assigned to a fixed location in memory. 
So you remember at this point, I will go back to the paint again. You please remember in in non vectored interrupt, the branch address is assigned to a fixed location in the memory. This is the ROM I am talking about. And there is a fixed location for that particular uh, given interrupt. There is a location is fixed. That uh, this interrupt means uh, uh, in the earlier paint example, we took that printer and the plant. So for printer, that uh, 0 to 10, let us say that is fixed. And uh, for plant, 11 to some 200, let us say, a uh, huge number of instructions are required, suppose, because that's a complex uh, plant handling. Is. So uh, level 11 to 200, that, that location is fixed for the plant. So that way. So non vector interrupt branch address is assigned to a fixed location in memory. Whereas this first one, vector interrupt, in vector interrupt, the source, who is generating source, maybe printer, maybe plant, maybe USB, that is uh, um, your uh, plug-in device that is called, uh, what is that? Pen drive. Uh, uh, those are the I/O devices. Uh, what I mean is basically I/O devices. Source that interrupts the supply is the branch information. Who is who is providing this branch information? Your plant will provide. Suppose the interrupt coming from the plant that itself will, will provide where I am, like 11 to 200 Baba I am. So go there and execute like that. Who is providing the branch required uh, set of instructions where they lie in the computer? Who is providing that information? That interrupt itself is providing. But in the earlier case, in non vector, interrupt is not providing any information related uh, related uh, instructions where they are. Who is making decision? The CPU itself will make decision. That's why it is fixed in domestic in domestic computer. All all are uh, fixed. Because we don't have, uh, do uh, any uh, any uh, you know uh, atomic uh, level uh, sort of uh, activities in home, so that's why uh, that is non vector mostly in the domestic computers non vector. But here uh, industry, so we source will provide the branch information to the computer. This information is called interrupt vector. So uh, that, that's how we complete this interrupt. Uh, uh, you know, uh, interrupt initiated uh, this one data transfer. So here I just stop and I ask uh, any any queries here if you have any questions. Are there any questions? Is that clear? First of all, you just tell me. I was uh, talking about this one. Sir, sir. Yeah, sir. The which the source to the source to the source to the source to the interrupt. Uh, can you, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a very bra breaking your, your audio. Can you be slow, bit slowly and uh, uh, you pa give some bit pauses and be loud enough? Sir, Sir, the uh -huh. address which the to delay the CPU, it is delivering through the interrupt Ah, address is delivered through the interrupt uh, request in the case of vectored interrupt type of uh, method. This is, there are two methods uh, how this uh, branch address is provided. So the one in the one method is called vectored interrupt method. The other is a non-vectored interrupt method. Non-interrupt vector method in that in that approach, this branch address is actually CPU handling. Who is handling CPU handling? But in a vectored type of uh, case. The branch address is provided by the source itself. If printer is uh, interrupting, printer itself will tell that where my related instructions are there in your memory. If plant is interrupting, plant will pro uh, provide where my my related instructions are there in your memory in your ROM. So that is called vectored interrupt. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Are there any more? Okay, I assume no more. Let us proceed to uh, no our countdown uh, mechanism. So we count down five. Uh, uh, in between, if there are any, you can come forward. Our count starts now. So countdown starts now. So five, four, three, two, one, and zero. So let us proceed to another. This is another mechanism. 
we were uh, so far we dealt with the programmed I/O and then interrupt, and then there is a there is another thing called uh, DMA, the direct memory access. The direct memory access is a sort of uh, interrupt only interrupt type, uh, type of uh, uh, approach. But uh, here, before going to this, I just go here for faint friend. And, uh, with this, we wrap our session. So, in DMA case, what happens is here you have CPU. And here you have your uh, DMA, that, that is direct memory access. DMA. And uh, here you have your IO devices. IO device. Actually, IO device. Every IO device is uh, through. Again, you should you should not forget. Every IO device actually having so uh, these are IO devices. Let us say these are IO devices. Every IO device has got its own interface. That you should not forget. At least till you finish not your exams, you should not forget that every interface uh, IO device has got its own interface. Interface. So now, uh. If this IO, suppose say we have one, two, some devices here. So this device wants to communicate uh, some data. Uh, it wants some data from the CPU or it wants to give some data to the CPU, suppose. So here we put some something called uh, memory also. Sorry. So now what is happening here? This IO interface will actually request a DMA that it, 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 it wants some data from the memory. Uh, two possible, uh, possibilities. One is from memory to IO device. Second possibility is from IO device to memory so both are possible no so uh, this may want to put some or it want to read some data from the memory so that's why these two cases now uh, what we do is cpu this cpu will be keep doing its own business that is some business whatever the user assigned uh, task one task two task three some programs will be keep doing that so if this IO device wants some data from the memory, then simply it requests this DMA. We, it is not requesting now to the CPU. It is not interrupting. It is, uh, see, two things are not happening. First thing is CPU not checking. This is not happening. This is not happening. And the second is interrupt is not coming to the CPU. This is also not happening. These two are not happening in this DMA case. What is happening then? IO device is directly talking to whom? DMA. So what it conveys, what it requests DMA that I want to put some data from memory to IO, I want to take some data from this memory, uh, from this memory to this device. I want some data. This is uh, trying to access this, or else this I want to put some data in, into the memory. So that is IO to memory. So this may be happen. So but these two cases are going to whom? Going to DMA, another another uh, uh, hardware pieces. DMA direct memory access is there. Another. Your hardware. What it does this uh, this DMA now, based upon the request that has come, that is maybe it wants uh, from memory, or it want to write to the memory based upon whatever the request, it simply requests uh, to the uh, this CPU that I want this this job, either job this this one or this one. So what it does this CPU for a while the way in interrupt it has done. In interrupt case, it has done. So that is, uh, it is going to the branch address, uh, routine, service routine, 
uh, and then the service routine is actually uh, looking after uh, IO transferring. So that that had happened in the interrupt. But here, this this is not going to service routine now. What it is doing is actually it is the CPU is uh, handling control control with we go all here. This is uh, uh, control bus control request. This uh, this control this control is uh, related to memory memory because uh, C, uh, CPU is not a, it's a computational device. Everything is actually our main memory. So this control CPU transfers. It, it, it is currently doing this job. So for a while, it what it does is it, it tells this control hardware that Baba, I am releasing the bus here. The CPU actually suppose say holding some bus here. One bus will be there. One is a data bus. The other is a memory bus. The other is a control bus. Right? We have seen uh, them in the IO devices. Uh, first first slide. Yeah, of this IBO, pro, uh, you know, this unit. So one is a control bus, the other is a data bus, the other is a uh, this address bus. Control. This is the first one. Control, and then address, and then data. This control, for a while, what it does, the CPU, to this, uh, to this, to this, to this control, it tells that. I am releasing now this uh, this control. Um, I am losing I am losing my control over the bus. And uh, you can control this bus mechanism. I will I will write down here this bus mechanism. Bus. This bus. What are the buses here? One is a control bus. The other is a data bus. The other is a what is that? Control. I will write on it. It's better to write it because I am forgetting. So this is the control. So there is the data. Uh, what is left? Address. Huh. Now it is clear. Control, data, address. Now what CPU does is, Baba, this control over this buses, I am re releasing to you. You will look into now. Earlier, this control over this buses, who is having control? CPU was having the control. Earlier, over this buses, this control bus, this data bus, this uh, address bus, who was having control? The CPU was having. Earlier, control was uh, there with the CPU. But the moment this devices, either of the devices, maybe uh, want to accept from the memory or it, they want to give to the memory. They are simply requesting the DMA. DMA is requesting to the CPU that you lose the control over these buses and give that uh, bus control to me. Who is asking? This DMA asking. So now CPU, what it does? It merely gives the bus control, bus bus control only, bus control only. To whom it gives? To DMA it gives. That's it. Nothing more. The DMA is that one because after all, it's the game of the bus. That this has to transfer all through from this to here, this memory. The game of bus, bus game. So, this bus game is a control mechanism, no? Bus game is, uh, it is also complex, but who is controlling? Earlier, CPU was controlling. Now, what we are doing? We are releasing the control from the CPU and giving that control to whom? Another, another hardware called DMA. Now, CPU still can losing the control over the bus. CPU still can uh, continue with the tasks given here because tasks are something computational, no arithmetic uh, operations or logical operations. They, they are not related to the bus. So though, those are the computation related. So that's why this computation still will go on though CPU for a while is giving this control of the bus. Remember the control of we are talking about the control means control of the bus we are talking about. Control of the bus is given to the DM. Now DMA, since it has captured the control of the bus, it starts, it, it, it is having a complete data of this memory. Inside this uh, CPU, this memory is there, no? This memory has got some, uh, you know, some, some uh, range here. This memory has got some range, suppose say here like this. 
uh, this is the range here, uh, 0 all through suppose say 128. So every information is also there with the DMA. So in which location it is there, requesting this I/O device uh, or in which location it wants to write, every information will be there in the DMA also the way CPU has got information and DMA also will have. So while handling the CPU control of the bus to the DMA device, the CPU passes this information, this information to the DMA, that bus, uh, you know, range, memory locations, uh, this range information of the CPU also will pass to the DMA. That way DMA is updated with the memory locations. That way now DMA can uh, know that from which memory uh, location this uh, this particular I.O. device is, is trying to access data or in which memory location this I.O. device wants to write in. So that information, now this DMA is aware with. Just because while handling this control to the DMA, CPU also handled the bus, uh, this address information also. That way this DMA knows. So with this, I stop uh, uh, this, uh, you know, uh, one, this one. I am not just, uh, I did not start DMA. I just gave you the introduction of how this is uh, different from uh, this one. Interrupt, interrupt, and how this is uh, different from your uh, program. I would say, uh, different. We have three cases, not here. We go here. Uh, this program, I will interrupt initiated, I and DMA. We discussed programmed I.O. clearly, we discussed interrupt initiated I.O. clearly, and I just gave the introduction to the DMA. So technically, how really it is happening that in the paint software, what all I have discussed, that needs to be discussed. So that needs to be discussed. So in next session, we will take up this direct memory access technically. But as a concept point of view, we took in the paint that how, how, what is the role of DMA and how DMA is actually playing a role in data transfer from I.O. devices to the memory and from memory to the I.O. devices. So with this, I wrap my session. And if you have any queries, you please stay here and ask. If you don't have any queries, you happily can uh, sign up. When you uh, is using the control, then how it is able to transfer the range of the information, range of the memory to DMA? Uh -huh, wait, wait. Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm just, just stop, trying to stop my recording here. Wait. Uh, 